Yeah. Matt, do you mind if I'm, I'm going to throw you a crazy question? That's something we do on weekend. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Antifa, Matt. Where mm -hmm. do you think they are coming from and where do you think they might eventually be going? How's that for a big question? Oh, that is big. Okay. So I'm going to take this a couple of different ways. Um, and something that, that might sound initially unpopular, but I, I ask the dear listeners to hear me out. I mean, first of all, I think most anti-fascists come uh, from a generally positive place. Um, that in their minds, what has been told to them, and, and sometimes unfortunately reinforced by certain elements of the movement, is you know most of them come from either multicultural families, um, or they have multicultural friends, members of the LGBT, LGBT uh, community, uh, and they think we're a direct threat to them. So for them, I mean, and you look at their writings, they believe in community self-defense, um, which, which is why they protest against us. You know, my, my belief has always been that the United States is a one-size-fits-none system, where whether you are a radical far leftist out in San Francisco, or you're just a working class guy or gal in the coal fields of Kentucky, the system doesn't represent you. Um, it, it fundamentally oppresses all of us, and there's really no way to steer the ship away from the rocks. We're already kind of on the rocks, um, and we need to be looking towards what the future is, which I believe is communities and regions being able to choose for the first time in American history, because going back uh, when it comes to self-determination, uh, the Whiskey Rebellion was put down by George Washington. Uh, you, know, you had uh, Continental Army veterans that were gunned down by their former comrades for, for opposing high taxes. Then, of course, we have 300,000 dead Confederate soldiers and 300,000 dead Union soldiers in the war between the states. And you know, you've got the gunning down of uh, miners in the Battle of Blair Mountain in 1921 and so on and so forth, um, where self-determination has never truly existed for the people. Um, so I've always believed the, the way forward isn't through conflict with communities of color or anti-fascist. Um, it, it's instead being able to assert ourselves uh, in our own communities, our own regions, to be able to chart our own course. So um, the Antifa, I think, for the most part, uh, it's very stereotypical that, you know, it, like they say, we're all uh, knuckle-dragging hate mongers. Uh, we all say that they're a bunch of uh, heroin-addicted losers who are on George Soros' pay payroll. Um, and I think people, they were actually being driven by the same spirit. Like, we're national socialists because we love our people, and we want a future for them. And a lot of those on the far left want the same thing. I think they've been co-opted by the capitalist system because open borders, um, the destruction of culture, religion, and identity is good for the international capitalist system. It's good for international Zionism. Um, and they're being used, but, but I believe their hearts are in the right place. But Matt, they're embracing communism, at least visibly. And you're saying they're, they're co-opted by capitalism. That's almost a dichotomy there. Well, I mean, capitalism and communism are two sides of the same coin of radical materialism. You know, National Socialism believes that uh, man is not just a physical being, he is also a spiritual being. Uh, that's why we have a connection to our ancestors, all future generations, our culture, our religious expressions. But capitalism says you, you know, it's essentially your, your worth is how much money you make. Um, you know, in the court system uh, right now, regardless of color or religion, if you've got enough money, you know, you could kill someone on Fifth Avenue and probably walk away with probation. Um, you know, we, we live in a system where money buys access to political power. It's not a government of the people. Uh, but communism then reduces everything down to money as well, that the dictatorship of the proletariat uh, is all based on class. Um, so it, it, it's money. It, it's on both sides of the <laughs> So I think a lot of these leftists have really been co-opted from their own vision. And, you know, one thing, you know, and people give me flack sometimes, but, you know, looking forward, the reason the, the National Socialist German Workers Party was able to get power um, was because so many leftists realized back in the 1920s and 30s that they were being used um, as members of the Red Front, um, their paramilitary arm of the Communist Party, members of the German Communist Party, anarchist groups. They were actually being used by international finance to destroy nationalism. So the ranks of the SA were made up of you know, what they used to call beefsteak Nazis that were brown on the outside, red on the inside, and that was you know, a slur. But you know, a lot of former leftists... <laughs> That's good. Yes? That's good. Yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, well, and you know, just to say, you know, looking at our modern movement, one of the best voices um, I think right now is Eric Stryker, 
um, you know, former writer for the Daily Stormer. Uh, he does a lot of podcasts. You know, he's a former leftist. And our ranks, you know, we're not a right wing movement. National socialism is not right wing. Like Gregor Strasser said, we must take from the right nationalism without capitalism and from the left socialism without internationalism. Uh, we take from both sides uh, for what's best for our people. Um, and a lot of these leftists, uh, I think, will increasingly come over to our side because they realize that what they're advocating for right now is actually helping big business. It's actually helping the banks. It's helping the warmongers around the world advance the globalist agenda. Um, so I think, um, you know, on one hand, they're going to get more violent. But on the other hand, I think a lot of them are going to find themselves within our ranks, just like happened in Germany, just like Mussolini, who was a former member of uh, the far left party in Italy. Uh, the black shirts were made up incredibly of uh, those that were very active on the political left. And they realized that the left does not answer the needs of the people, does not lead to empowering the people, does not answer capitalism. They just end up getting used to <laughs> for the bankers. So I, I think there's a huge potential in the very near future for Antifa to, on one hand, become more violent um, and reactionary, but for, for there to, to be a lot of people coming over to our side. And I think we need to be open to that because if, you know, our forebearers were willing to do it in the 20s and 30s, uh, we need to be open to that as well. And, you know, that that's a great point you brought up because we, I, I think, we're open to you, but yet... Uh, I, I, what you're saying, Matt, is we need to be even more open. We have a call from uh, area code 814. 814, welcome to NSM Weekend. Uh, glad to be here, KJ. Uh, of course, uh, Sunday here in the Northeast is, is looking pretty fine, but is, uh, I'm listening to what uh, Matthew's saying. Uh, you know, I, I remember a, a speech Joseph Goebbels made um, back in uh, 36 and it was uh, before Germany had been forced into uh, going to arms but uh, it was basically these national socialists uh, predominantly the ones that came to the national socialist movement uh, 1926, 27, 28, 29 all the way up to like 31 uh, they didn't come from the moon uh, they came from the other side I did yeah, not know I, that. I think, I, I, I think that's a really good point, um, you know, because if you're fighting for, for socialism, and, and that's what we really believe in, and, and people always confuse, I think, in the American context. They think the Cold War, they think the Soviet Union, but, you know, um, socialism means being able to, to help your, your extended family. That's what a nation is. That's what your race is. It's an extended family. And, you know, the fact that we've got veterans right now in the United States that are dying on the streets, you know, there are more empty houses in America than we have homeless people. Um, you know, the, the, the system that we have created where instead of helping homeless people, uh, some will commit crimes right before winter so they can be locked up just long enough so they don't freeze to death on the streets. That's, that's what capitalism brings. Um, but socialism is saying, no, you're, you're my family. Um, you know, the, the SA especially had policies in the 1920s to get the unemployed members of the SA, bring them into your homes for Christmas, bring them into your homes uh, to feed your comrades. It's, it's all about being one big family. And, and that spirit, I think, is how we can win over not just our people in the streets, but those in the political left. And you think about it, every anti-fascist or every communist right now uh, that we can recruit to our side is, is not just an addition to our ranks. It's also one less soldier that the banking class gets to use against us. So that's a, that, that's a double win in my book. <laughs> The banking class. I like that. The banking class. <laughs> um, but uh, I was just thinking.